It's Mrs. Ferris from Wood Library with my friend Bernard, and we're ready for some bedtime stories. Are you? Well, let's get started. Our first story is actually kind of a song story. In fact, that's how I first heard it. It's called In a Cabin in a Woods. It's adapted by Darcy McNally and illustrated by Robin Michael Kuntz, and it's published by Cabo Hill Duck. And it's kind of a wintry story, even though we don't have snow on the ground here yet. We will, I promise. And I don't know if you can see. Here's a man, and he's doing some painting. Well, in a cabin, in a wood, a little man by the window stood. He saw a rabbit hopping by, knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help, it said, before the hunter shoots me dead. Oh, come, little rabbit, come inside. Safely you'll abide. So the rabbit came in. Should I sing it? I think I will. In a cabin in a wood, little man by the window stood, saw a possum waddling by, knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help it wailed, before that hunter pulls my tail. Well, come, little possum, come inside. Safely you'll abide. So now the possum came in with all its babies. In a cabin in a wood, little man by the window stood, saw a raccoon prancing by, knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help it beg, before that hunter thumps my leg. Well, come, little raccoon, come inside. Safely you'll abide. So the raccoon came in and helped himself to some cookies. In a cabin in a wood, little man by the window stood. Saw a beaver dashing by, knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help it purred before the hunter grabs my fur. Well, come, little beaver, come inside. Safely you'll abide. So the beaver came in. Oh, my goodness, it looks like they're getting into his paints. And look who's looking in the window. I think he's next. In a cabin in a wood, little man by the window stood. Saw a moose come thudding by knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help, it cried, before the hunter whacks my hide. <laughs> well, come, little moose, come inside. Safely you'll abide. So the moose came in and made himself quite at home in the bathtub. Well, in a cabin in a wood, little man by the window stood. Saw a skunk come hopping by, knocking at the door. Help me, help me, help, it said, before the hunter shoots me dead. Well, come, little skunk, come inside. And all the other animals go, all the other animals run. Safely you'll abide. Now in case you didn't catch what was going on, let's go back a page or two. There's the man with his paints, but he's only using the black paint and he's painting both sides of that bunny rabbit leaving a white streak down its back. So what does it look like? A skunk. At least that's what all the other animals thought before they all ran away. And then it was just the man and the bunny. And they liked that a lot. 
And there's the words to the song and the music, in case you ever want to do it at home. All right, well, should we do a finger play? Which one have you been wanting to do? Hmm? Well, what do we do one about a bunny? I don't think we've done that one here. Can you put your two fingers up? Like they're big bunny ears? Here is a bunny with his ears so funny. Can you wiggle them? And here's his hole in the ground. Can you bring your fingers around to make a hole like that? When a noise he hears, well, he pricks up his ears and he hops in the hole with a bound. Let's do it again. Get your bunny ears. Here is a bunny with his ears so funny and here's his hole in the ground. When a noise he hears, well, he pricks up his ears and he hops in that hole with a bound. Well, we're going to have a story now that sounds familiar, but with a little bit of a twist. This is called Goldie Socks and the Three Librarians. Can you imagine why I picked that one? This is written by Jackie Mims Hopkins, illustrated by John Manders, and is published by Upstart. Once upon a time, Nestled deep in an enchanted forest, there lived a book-loving bear family. Now, Papa Bear was a public librarian. Librarian, did you hear me say that? I know it's not right, but when you're a bear and you're a librarian, you can be a librarian. And Mama Bear, well, she was a school librarian. And their son, Baby Bear, well, he was a librarian in training at the Grizzly Preschool. Now one morning, a little girl named Goldie Socks was on her way to school. Goldie Socks usually walked along the road, but this day, since she was running particularly late, she decided to take a shortcut through the forest. And by and by, Goldie Socks came upon an astonishing sight. There in the middle of the forest, she saw a cottage that appeared to be made out of books. Well, Goldie Socks loved books more than bears love honey, so she went up to the house for a closer look. She knocked on the door, and to her surprise, it creaked open. Well, cautiously, Goldie Socks peeked inside. Shelves and shelves of wondrous books lined the walls, and she called out to see if anyone was home. But no one answered. Goldie Socks knew she shouldn't go in, but the temptation of all those books was more than she could bear. Now, once inside the cottage, Goldie Socks went straight to the shelves and began browsing through the books. The first book she pulled off was, oh, too big. In fact, it was so heavy, it fell on the floor. Goldie Socks went to another shelf, but the book she took from this shelf was too little. And then she looked through some nonfiction books and she found one that was just right. Goldie Socks wandered over to another shelf and opened up a chapter book. She used the five finger rule to see if the book was too hard. She started with a closed fist, and when she came to a word she couldn't read, she put one finger up. And all five fingers went up while reading the first page of the book, so she knew that book was too hard for her. She tried another book, but it was too easy. Then she found a book of fairy tales that was just right. After she found several books that were just right for her, Goldie Socks began searching for the perfect place to read them. She looked around the room and spotted a big, lazy bear recliner. She climbed in the enormous chair and pushed back, but whoa, it went back too far. She surveyed the room again, and this time she spied a poofy couch with lots of pillows. Goldie Socks sprang into the air and landed smack dab in the middle of the couch and pillows flew everywhere. The couch was too squishy. Maybe there's a comfy place upstairs, she thought. Don't you like the stairs? They look like books, don't they? 
Now, when Goldilocks reached the top of the stairs, she saw a tent made out of a blanket. She crawled inside the cozy tent, opened the book of fairy tales, and began reading. Yes, this place was just right. Now, around noon, the three librarians came home for lunch. Now, Papa Librarian immediately noticed one of his books on the floor. Somebody's been looking at my big books and left one right there on the floor, he said. Then Mama Librarian said, well, somebody's been looking at my little books and put one back on the shelf with the pages showing instead of the spine. And then Baby Librarian said, somebody's been looking at my nonfiction books. Oh, he'd been studying. Nonfiction books are fact books or information books. And one is gone. Well, Papa Librarian looked at another shelf and said, somebody's been looking at my hard books and left one on top of the shelf. Somebody's been looking at my easy books, said Mama, and put one of them back on the shelf upside down. And then Baby Librarian said, oh, somebody's been looking at my fairy tale books and one is gone. Well, Papa Librarian saw that his favorite chair was not in the same position he had left it. Somebody's been sitting in my recliner and left it pushed all the way back, he said. Then Mama Librarian said, somebody's been on my poofy couch and knocked all the pillows on the floor. Well, the three librarians crept up the stairs, and when they got to the top, baby librarian said, oh, somebody's been in my cozy reading tent, and there she is. Goldie Socks looked up from her book, and she saw the big, sharp teeth of the three librarians. and they were smiling at her. And then Mama and Papa and Baby Librarian joined Goldie Socks in the tent. And Papa Librarian read a story to everyone. And you know, it was just right. So that's the story about the three librarians with Goldie Socks. But just remember, if you ever meet a librarian, remember to say that she is a librarian who works at, can you guess? The library. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're ready to shake our sillies. Do you have your sillies with you? Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out? Shake, shake, shake your sillies out. Shake, shake. Shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out? Clap, clap, clap your crazies out. Clap, clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch. Stretch your stretchies out, stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Time for you to stand up. Can you jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake. Shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, this next book is actually one that I like to do as a finger play song. 
but we're going to have it as a book today. This is called The Grand Old Duke of York. This is written by Maureen Roffey and illustrated by Bernard Large, and it's published by Whispering Coyote Press. So there's the Duke of York, and there are his men. The grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. For when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Now the grand old Duke of York, he had 500 men. He marched them in and out of a wood and marched them in again. And some turned to the left and some turned to the right and some marched all around the wood till day turned into night. The grand old Duke of York, his men were half asleep. He marched them through a river, but the river was too deep. Now some of them did sink, and some of them did swim, and some did firmly shake his hand and bid farewell to him. The grand old Duke of York had only 20 men. 15 marching through a farm were chased off by a hen. And two were lost in the barn, and two were lost in the sty. And one ran off and waved goodbye. Oh, and only one soldier, <laughs> let's get this right. And the one soldier who was left ran off and waved goodbye. Sorry about that. So how many soldiers does he have? None. The grand old Duke of York, he found himself alone. He sat right down on top of a drum and there did weep and moan. He threw away his sword. He threw away his gun. And then he wished that all his travels never had begun. Well, the grand old Duke of York, he heard a bugle sound. As he buckled on his sword and gun, his heart began to pound. He saw them in rows of five. He saw them in rows of ten. They all lined up in front of him, the Duke's 10,000 men. So they all came back, didn't they? Now we can do one verse of that, like we do it in the story time. So. These are going to be your 10,000 men. Start with them right on your lap. The grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. He marched them to the left. He marched them to the right. He marched them over upside down. Oh, what a funny sight. For when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. All right, well, let's have a story. Some of those soldiers got lost in the pigsty, didn't they? So we're going to have a story about a pig named Tom. This is called Tom's Tale. It's written by Linda Jennings with pictures by Tim Warrens and is published by Little Brown and Company. That doesn't look very comfortable, does it? That duck is pulling on his tail. I wonder why. Now Tom was the sort of piglet who was never quite satisfied. When he considered his tail, he was not pleased at all. It was a neat little tail, but it was all curly twirly and Tom wanted it straight. In all other ways, Tom was a fine little pig. He was a nice pale pink with dirty patches here and there where he had wallowed in the mud. He slurped and snuffled in the trough with all his brothers and sisters and made the usual piggy noises, but oh, how he wished he had a straight tail. Now, Sam the sheepdog, 
had a lovely black plumy tail. And Hannibal the horse had a long swishy tail. And Geraldine the Jersey cow had a thin stringy tail with a little tuft at the end. Why, even the rat's tail is less curly than mine, said Tom miserably. Well, very soon, all the animals on Apple Tree Farm were fed up with Tom's complaints. Why don't you go get your tail straightened, said Hannibal. But how, asked Tom. Well, like this, said Hannibal, and he put his big hoof on the edge of Tom's tail and said, now walk away. Oh, Tom squealed and squeaked with the pain of Hannibal's heavy hoof. But then, as he began to walk, his tail stretched out, and when it had uncurled to the very end, Hannibal let go. Bing! Back sprung the tail, and Tom hurtled forward. Ouch! yelled Tom and Sam the sheepdog together because that's where Tom landed. Tell you what, said Sam, picking himself up. Why don't I take hold of your tail and you can lead me along? That should straighten it. So Tom took Sam for a walk past the pigsty, around the pond, and over the buttercup meadows. And very soon Tom's tail ached and ached from being pulled so tight. Oh, let go, he cried. Bing! Back sprang the tail to its usual curly, whirly self, and Tom felt miserable. Now Geraldine the Jersey cow looked at Tom and she chewed thoughtfully. Suddenly, she had a very good idea. She told it to Sam who took hold of Tom's tail again and stretched it. Oh, it hurt terribly. Then he pushed the tail into a big patch of gooey, squelchy mud. And he made Tom lie with his tail covered in the mud for a very long time until the mud dried and Tom's tail was set into a long, thin pencil. Yippee, yelled Tom. He twirled around trying to see his new straight tail. Ouch, cried Sam. Tom had poked him right in the chest. You look very silly, said Tom's mother. But Tom didn't care. He liked to be different. I'll try to wag my tail like Sam does, he said. Whack. Tom's tail hit his sister right in the face, and then it stuck his brother on the bottom. Stop that, cried Tom's mother as his brother and sister cried. Now when it was dark, Tom's mother gathered in all her piglets for the night. They liked to snuggle up in a big piggy heap, but Tom's tail got in the way. Go away, cried all his brothers and sisters and they chased Tom right out at the pigsty. Oh, poor Tom. He tried to curl up against the farmyard wall, but it wasn't very comfortable to lie down with a tail as stiff as a pencil. At long last, though, he fell asleep. Now in the night, it began to rain, but Tom tried to sleep as best he could. As it rained, the hard mud softened and slid off of his tail. And by the time morning came, his tail was as curly twirly as it had ever been. Grunting happily, Tom went back to the sty. Who wants a straight tail anyway, said Tom later as he pushed and shoved into the trough with all his brothers and sisters. However, if I could only have a long, elegant nose like Hannibal the horse instead of this silly snout, I could really get at my food. What do you think? Should he get a long snout? Or should he be happy with his piggy snout? I think he should be happy with this. Well, what do you think? 
Is it time to hmm, chew our bubble gum? Reach in your pocket. And if you don't have a real pocket, just pretend like I am and pull out a piece of pretend bubble gum. If it has a wrapper on it, you don't want to eat that, so take the wrapper off and throw it in the trash. Then we're going to have you pop your gum in your mouth, chew it up until it's all soft and squishy, and then you know what we're going to do, right? We're going to chew it and spit it in our hand, and then, well, it's pretty disgusting. You'll see if you have done it with us before. So put your gum in your mouth and start chewing. Should be ready, so put your hand out. One, two, three, spit it in your hand. And clap your other hand on top. And we've got sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. You don't want to leave it there, so let's say unstick together. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. Did you do it? On stick, come on back. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Well, let's have one more book before our end one, of course. And it's another one about a tale. This is called My Tales Not Tired. This is written by Jana Novotny Hunter with pictures by Paula Bowles. And it's illustrated by, not illustrated, published by Child's Play. Look at all those stars. It's a story about a little monster who's not quite ready for bed. Come on, little monster, said Big Monster. You must be tired after your busy day. No, I'm not, said Little Monster, quick as a wink. My knees aren't tired. My knees have lots of bounces in them. Big Monster smiled and said, show me. So, boing, 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 went Little Monster's knees until they had no more bounces left. Big Monster clapped. I bet your knees want to rest after that. Yes, but my bottom doesn't want to rest. My bottom wants to wiggle jiggle, said Little Monster. And Big Monster nodded. Of course it does. Show me. So, wiggle, 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 jiggle, went Little Monster's bottom until there were no more wiggles left. What a fast dance, said Big Monster. Your bottom must need to sit down after that. Yes, but my tail doesn't need to sit, Little Monster insisted. My tail needs to swing, swing, swing. Big monster groaned. Oh, show me. So, wee, 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 went little monster's tail until it had no more swings left. Oh, that tail must be getting sleepy by now, suggested Big Monster. 
maybe a tiny bit, but my back won't lie still. It still has to, well, it has to roly-poly around, said Little Monster. All right then, show me, said Big Monster. And so, roly poly ole o oh, went Little Monster until there were no more rolls left. Spectacular rolling, Big Monster said. That tired back must need rubbing. And Big Monster rubbed Little Monster's back over and over again. Ah! Was that a yawn? Big Monster wondered. No, growled Little Monster. My voice isn't tired yet. Really? You'd better show me, said Big Monster. So, rah, 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 roared Little Monster. Oh, Big Monster cried. What a scary monster. It's only me, just your little monster. Well, so it is. Your voice must need a rest after all that roaring. Yes, but my feet aren't tired. My feet have jumps inside them. Show me. Surprise! Little Monster jumped up like a jack-in-the-box, and Big Monster was surprised. Now that has tired me out, Big Monster yawned. How about you? Little Monster flapped both arms. Not my arms! My arms need to fly like a jet plane. Big Monster sighed. <sighs> Show me. So, zoom, 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 went Little Monster round and round the room, landing hard on Big Monster's lap. Goodness, Big Monster gasped. Every bit of you must be tired after all that jetting around. Little Monster's horns wobbled. Yes, but my eyes aren't tired. My eyes want to open and shut. Open and shut. Open, shut. Shut, shut. your fingers and wiggle your toes and wiggle your shoulders and how about your nose? Can you wiggle your elbows and slap your knees and stretch your arms out and get ready please because it's time for our flannel board story. Well once there was a dragonfly who was friends with a parrot. Have you seen the crocodile? asked Parrot. No, said the dragonfly. Hmm. So they flew along together. And soon they met. Bumblebee. Have you seen the crocodile? asked Dragonfly and Parrot. No, said Bumblebee. Hmm, they said. But they kept on flying. Have you seen the crocodile? Parrot and dragonfly and bumblebee asked. Butterfly? No, said butterfly. But she flew along with them. They flew and flew until they met. Hummingbird. Have you seen the crocodile? No, said hummingbird. Hmm. So they flew and flew a little bit longer until they saw Frog sitting right there. Have you seen the crocodile? Asked Parrot and Dragonfly and Bumblebee and Butterfly and Hummingbird. No, said Frog. Well, no one's seen the crocodile, said Parrot and Dragonfly and Bumblebee and Butterfly and Frog. But just then, the water started to ripple 
and oh my goodness. Do you know what's down here? I've seen the crocodile, snapped crocodile, but But has anyone seen the parrot, the dragonfly, the bumblebee, the frog, or the butterfly? And you know what? Nobody did. So are you ready to say good night? I hope so. It's time for our Sandra Boynton book. Good night, good night. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over. Scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to, can you say it since we have it every week, practically, exercise. You see Bernard doing some push-ups? One, two, three. And then down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. They climb into their feather bed. Some at the foot and some at the head. And two little rabbits sing a song while everybody hums along. <laughs> Much longer song if you get the book. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock and rock to sleep. And I think it's probably just about time for you to rock and rock and rock yourself to sleep. So Bernard, should we say good night? Good night and we'll be back next week with some more stories. Some bedtime stories with Mrs. Ferris. See you then.